Good evening. Welcome to the Lord's house tonight. A special welcome to the guests who are with us. It's our joy to have you here as we share the good news of Jesus and his wonderful love. Let's take a couple of moments and we'll greet our fellow worshipers around us in the name of our Lord and Savior. This weekend, we get to celebrate one of the minor festivals in the church here, the Feast of St. Michael and All Angels, reminding us the importance the angels play in our life and how God uses them for our protection and his bidding. The liturgy has been printed out for you. We'll be following that. And please join, join me as we sing our opening hymn, hymn number 278. Please rise. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins to God our Father, asking him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Merciful Father, I confess that I am by nature sinful, and that I have disobeyed you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have done what is evil, and failed to do what is good. 
For this I deserve your punishment, both now and in eternity. But I am truly sorry for my sins. And trusting in my Savior, Jesus Christ, I pray. Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. God, our Heavenly Father, has been merciful to us. He has given his only Son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ and by his authority, I forgive you all of your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Everlasting God, you have ordained and constituted in a wonderful order the ministries of angels and mortals. Mercifully grant that as your holy angels always serve and worship you in heaven, so by your direction they may help and defend us here on earth. Through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. Our first lesson, and also the basis for the sermon, comes to us from the book of 2 Kings, chapter 6. God sends his angels to protect Elisha. Now when the king of Aram was waging war against Israel, he would make plans with his officials, saying, My camp will be at such and such a place. But the man of God would send a message to the king of Israel, saying, Be careful when you pass this place, because the Arameans are going down there. So the king of Israel would send scouts to the place that the man of God had pointed out. So the man of God warned him, and he was kept safe. And not just once or twice. The king of Aram was enraged because of this. He summoned his officials and said to them, Won't you tell me who of us is for the king of Israel? One of his officials said, No, my lord the king. It is Elisha, the prophet in Israel, who tells the king of Israel the words which you speak in your bedroom. Then he said, Go and see where he is. Then I'll send men and capture him. He was told Dothan is where he is. 
So he sent horses and chariots and a strong force there. They came at night and surrounded the city. When the man of God's servant got up early and went out, there were soldiers, horses, and chariots surrounding, surrounding the city. So his attendant said to Elisha, Oh no, my lord, what will we do? He answered, Don't be afraid, for those who are with us are more than those who are with them. Then Elisha prayed and said, O Lord, open his eyes so that he can see. Then the Lord opened the servant's eyes, and he saw that the hills were full of horses and chariots of fire all around Elisha. The word of the Lord. We continue with our song of the day, Psalm 91, and for that, we'll sing hymn number 440. Our second lesson from Revelation chapter 12, St. Michael leads the good angels to battle the devil and his evil angels. There was also a war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought with the dragon. The dragon fought back along with his angels, but he was not strong enough. There was no longer a place for them in heaven. The great dragon was thrown down, the ancient serpent, the one called the devil and Satan, the one who leads the whole inhabited earth astray, was thrown down to the earth and his angels were thrown down with him. 
I heard a loud voice in heaven saying, Now have come the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Christ. Because the accuser of our brothers has been thrown down, the one who accuses them before our God day and night. They conquered him because of the blood of the Lamb and because of the word of their testimony. They did not love their lives in the face of death. For this reason, rejoice, you heavens, and those who dwell in them. Woe to the earth and the sea, for the devil has gone down to you. He is full of rage because he knows that his time is short. The word of the Lord. Please rise. Alleluia. Praise the Lord, you his angels, you mighty ones who do his bidding. Alleluia. The Holy Gospel, according to St. Luke, chapter 10, reminds us that it is that gospel message that drives Satan out of our life. The 72 returned with joy, saying, Lord, even the demons submit to us in your name. He told them, I was watching Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Look, I have given you authority to trample on snakes and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing will ever harm you. Nevertheless, do not rejoice that the spirits submit to you, but rejoice that your names have been written in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. This time the 5th and 6th graders where Lutheran Elementary School will sing their song. That will be followed by our hymn of the day, hymn number 196.
Grace, peace, and mercy are yours in abundance, from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I've got some big news. We live in a dangerous world. It's probably not that big. All of you knew that already. We see it all the times on the headlines in the news. Different countries, they posture against one another for a show of force, saying, look at me, you don't want to mess with me, and start a fight with us. Senseless acts of violence take a life, leaving nothing but sadness and more questions in its wake. Natural disasters can change the landscape in a moment. Hurricanes bring catastrophic flooding. Tornadoes can level buildings in its path just as a bowling ball levels the pins at a bowling alley. If you look at that, and our hearts sink. Sometimes maybe we even grow accustomed to it and we're just so used to hearing all the negative headlines, but we still wonder in the back of our mind, when are we going to have relief? When, is all the, when are all these bad things going to be done? And it doesn't even begin to describe our personal life either then. We narrowly escape an accident on our way to work. We await those test results Anxiety at a high, at a high time, at an all time high in our life until the doctors can figure out what is wrong with us. And then we also have the spiritual battle being waged against us each and every day. Satan, who's right there trying to trip us and make us fall from the grace of God, we battle not only him, but the world and our sinful nature. And at times it seems like we are fighting a losing battle. But when we feel like we are on the brink of losing, when we feel like all hope is lost, we have to remember we are not alone. We do not fight alone. Our God knows the outcome. Our God sends his protectors. The nations of Aram and Israel, they were at war. The king of Aram, he was making his plans, and they thought, okay, I'm going to send my army to these certain places, and all they would do is they would wait there. They would try to ambush the Israelites as they would come by, and that way they could defeat them. But it always seemed like Israel was one step ahead of whatever the Arameans planned. The man of God, Elisha, was feeding inside information to the king of Israel. Elisha said, be careful when you go here, be careful when you go there, because Aram, they're waiting for you. So the Israelites, they would send out these scouts ahead to see what was going on, and sure enough, there is the army of Aram lying there in wait, so we better stay away from that. It didn't happen just once, not twice, but this happened multiple times. The king of Aram grew furious. He was wondering if he had a traitor in his midst. Was someone giving all the secrets to the Israelites? And he was bound to find out who it was. And so he called together all of his servants. Who is helping Israel, he wanted to know. You just picture this one servant kind of raising his hand, wondering, okay, should I really say anything? He says, Cain, it's not any of us. We're remaining loyal to you. But over in Israel, they have this prophet, this man named Elisha, and he is telling Israel each and every step that you are doing. It's as if he was sitting right there in your bedroom, listening to those plans that you are making with your generals each and every night. Now, Elisha, he did not have a bug planted in the palace. He didn't have one of the servants of the king of Aram on his peril. Elisha, he was getting all this information from God. The all-knowing God. The God who fed that information to keep his people Israel safe. 
God sees all. God knows everything. When we think of that, does that comfort us? Or does it make us scared? It can be a scary thing that God knows all things. It means he knows everything I have done, especially all the bad things I have done. In our life, we tr- go to great lengths to try and cover up all of our sins. We'll lie, we'll lie some more, and then we have to make up an even bigger lie to cover up what we did wrong. We'll try to keep our sins private because if no one else sees it, maybe we can get away with it. Maybe we, as long as it's just in our mind, it's okay. No one is a mind reader, so that way no one knows if we are breaking God's commands. But God knows. God sees all of those sins. And a sin cannot stand in the presence of a holy God. Sin brings about death. Sin ultimately will bring about eternal separation from the love and grace of God in heaven. In that sense, the omniscient God who knows everything is a very scary thing. But it's also a very comforting thing that God knows all. Since God knows that we are sinners, he knows we are unable to save ourselves by any of our works, he also knows that we need help. Even before Adam and Eve sinned in the Garden of Eden, God had his plan of salvation. God knew that he was going to send his son into this world, would live a perfect life for everyone, and then go to the cross, and there he would take our place and suffer and die so that we might be free from all of our sins. God knew that. He had it all planned out. Our God knows everything. Despite our sinfulness, We are wrapped in Christ's perfection. God, he is right there by our side, and since he knows the outcome, he is not going to let evil overtake us. And so we trust in his promises. We rest securely in his arms, knowing that he already knows the outcome. The war, it's already been been determined. Jesus, he came out victorious. Satan's head has been crushed. Jesus is the victor. We do not fight alone. Our God knows the outcome. Jesus came and he defeated Satan, but that doesn't mean Satan goes away quietly. No, Satan, he still sticks around in our life and he still is there as a bad habit and he is trying to rip us away from God's gracious hands but we still don't fight alone. Our God sends his protectors. The king of Aram had to change his plans. No longer was he going to go and fight against Israel, but now he turned his attention towards Elisha. He figured, if I get rid of Elisha, well, then no one else can tell the Israelites what I'm doing, and then we can finally defeat them. And so he told his servants, let's make sure we kind of keep our eyes and ears open and find out where Elisha is, and so that way we can go after him. Eventually, they found out that Elisha was in Dothan. So under the cover of darkness, the king of Aram, he sent his chariots, he sent his horses, he sent a strong force, and there they surrounded the city. At sunrise the next morning, one of Elisha's servants went out. He looked at everywhere around him, saw an army of horses and chariots in that strong force. And the only thing he could think of was, "Uh uh-oh, we're in trouble now. Elisha did not have a protective detail around him. 
The army of Israel, they were too far off and they could not come to help Elisha in time. And so that servant, all he could see was defeat. Elisha came out and he surveyed the situation. He saw the very same thing. But his attitude was not the same as the servant's. He said, those who are with us are more than those who are surrounding us. And maybe that servant thought, okay, Elisha, he's kind of delirious from fear. He doesn't know what he's talking about because all I see are the, is the army of Aram surrounding us and we are in trouble and they are going to defeat us. But then Elisha prayed, Lord, open up my servant's eyes. And then that servant, he took another look around. He saw horses and chariots. Not the army of Aram. Not an ally that came to their defense. But these were chariots and horses of fire. A heavenly army. God's angels that he sent to protect Elisha and those who were with him. The account continued in the verses following. The Arameans, they were struck with blindness. Elisha, he went right up to those generals of the army of Aram, and then he led them right to where the Israelite army was. And then all of a sudden, when the Arameans could see again, all the tables had turned. They were surrounded, and they were struck down. God, he sent his protectors to help Elisha to help those who are with him, to protect them in their time of trouble. Many people have a fascination with angels. You can remember TV shows, Highway to Heaven, Touched by an Angel. Right? Some of you probably remember those shows, right? The older shows. Hallmark movies, especially at Christmas, talk about a Christmas angel or something like that. Nowadays, maybe those shows turn to the other side, the flip side of it. You have shows called Lucifer, talk about Satan and his evil demons that people are fascinated with. But whatever it is, people have this fascination with angels. They try to figure out who these, who these angels are and what exactly they do. Well, what do you think of when you think of angels? Do you think of Isaiah chapter 6? Those seraphs flying around the throne of God, yelling, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. They have those six wings, with two they cover their feet, with two they cover their eyes, and with two they are flying. Do you think of that angelic choir on the night that Jesus was born? They appear to the shepherds and they sing in their chorus how peace came to earth, peace between God and sinful mankind, announcing the birth of Jesus to those shepherds. Do you think of Gabriel? He came and he gave that wonderful message to Mary, you are going to have a child. And he's not going to be any ordinary child. This is going to be the Savior. This is going to be the Messiah, Jesus. The one promise from of old. You think of Michael, the archangel, the one we read about in Revelation, fighting against Satan and his angels, driving them out of heaven. The Bible talks about angels in various ways. That word angel simply means messenger. Those angels are God's messengers, bringing God's word to people, doing his bidding. But it's those angels that also serve as protectors of God's people. We have that wonderful promise that God gives us that he will command his angels to guard us in all of our ways. We sing about that in our psalm of the day and that, that hymn on eagle's wings, that those angels are there, they will not let us strike our foot against a stone. Those angels are there surrounding us that unseen heavenly army, 
There are probably more times than we know, more times than we could count that are fighting to protect us from the temptations of Satan and what and the harm he could do to us. God uses those angels to protect us, to help us as they do his bidding. And so we praise our Lord and Savior. We give him thanks that he sends those angels to protect us. We do not fight alone. We could not survive if we would fight alone. Our God, he knows the outcome. We are victorious. Our God, he sends his protectors, those heavenly angels, to do his bidding and to guard us along our path of life. Satan, he stands no chance. Amen. And the peace of God that transcends all understanding will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Amen. We now join confessing our faith and we'll use the words of the Nicene Creed that's found printed for you on page 6 in your worship folder. We'll confess together. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who in unity with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We'll continue with the prayer of the church. Lord our God, you are very great. You are clothed with splendor and majesty. You make your angels spirits and your servants flames of fire. Lord, you are our refuge and our fortress. The devil and his angels constantly set the temptations of the world before us, and they play tricks in our sinful flesh with temptations within. Help us conquer them all through the blood of Jesus the Lamb. Lord, you are our refuge and our fortress. You are our God, and you lead us. We are surrounded by many dangers, storms, fire, floods, accidents, and violence. Protect your people. Command your angels concerning us to keep us in all our ways. Lord, you are our refuge and our fortress. We give you thanks for your servants on earth who also protect and serve us in danger, police, fire, and ambulance workers. Strengthen them for the difficult work they do and send your angels to protect them. Lord, you are our refuge and our fortress. You are our God. You us. The eyes of all look to you. You open your hand and satisfy the desire of every living thing. Watch over those who gather the harvest and keep them safe. Lord, you are our refuge and our fortress. You are our God, and you lead us. Send your holy angels to watch over those who are sick, 
or who bear heavy burdens. Keep Satan and his temptations of doubt and despair far from them. Give them hope that nothing can separate them from your love, which is theirs in Jesus Christ our Lord. Lord, you are our refuge and our fortress. You are our God, and you lead us. Hear us, Lord, as we bring you our private petitions. Lord, King Eternal, send us your holy angels to defend us in both soul and body. Just as ye have called us to share with them the blessedness of the world to come, may we follow their example and do your will on earth as it is done in heaven. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Please rise. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good and right that we should at all times and in all places give you thanks, O Lord, Holy Father. Almighty and everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who promised that wherever two or three come together in his name, there he is with them to shepherd his flock till he comes again in glory. Therefore, with all the saints on earth and hosts of heaven, we praise your holy name and join their glorious song. Blessed are you, Lord God, eternal King and gracious Father. In love you made us the crown of your creation. In mercy you planned our salvation. In grace you sent your Son to redeem us from sin. We remember and give you thanks that your eternal Son, Jesus Christ, became flesh and made his dwelling among us, that he willingly placed himself under law to redeem those under law, that he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death on a cross, that he has destroyed death and has brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. Bless us as we receive your Son's body and blood in this sacrament. Forgive our sins, increase our faith, strengthen our fellowship, and deepen our longing for the day when Christ will welcome us to his eternal feast. Praise and thanks and honor and glory be to you, O God, our Father and to your Son, and to the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, 
the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night that he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink it, in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Please be seated. During the distribution, we continue with the singing of our next hymns, 222 and 198, with verses as needed. And now, with all things prepared and with repentant hearts, we invite those wanting faith with us to come in the direction of the usher.
And now may this, the true body and true blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen and keep you unto life everlasting. Going peace, your sins have been forgiven. Please rise. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. Whenever we eat this bread and drink this cup, We give you thanks, Lord God, that you have given us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. As the battles of life continue, protect us through the service of your angels, that we may be delivered from evil, live our lives in peace, and finally join the company of saints and angels to sing your praise. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Please be seated. Once again, good evening to everyone. Thank you for the fifth and sixth graders once more for staying tonight. You find our worship service. Just one announcement to draw your attention to. Please take note that next weekend we are celebrating our mission fest. Uh, emphasis this year is on home missions. Our guest preacher is going to be Tommy Welch. He is senior assistant at St. John's in Juneau, Horicon, and Salem Lowell. And he is going to give his presentation on his vicar year in Asheville, North Carolina, the mission congregation down there. And then also, there's going to be a potluck following the 10 o'clock service, take place about 11, 15 or so downstairs in the church basement. So hopefully many of you can join us for that. With that, I wish you God's richest blessings upon your evening and may keep you safe until we meet again. <laughs>